My name is Kerry Ray. I was born just outside of Boston. New England is a beautiful place, until it's not. Did I mention the snow? 17 years ago, I got tired of the cold weather and moved to South Carolina. But it was cold there too, so I hightailed it to Nosara, Costa Rica. Where I stumbled upon this mountain paradise on the Pacific that became K Ray's Irish Pub and Inn. My pub with a pool in Costa Rica. Oh, here comes Yannick. My guest today is my friend Yannick, who's originally from Canada, uh, Quebec to be exact. Yannick and I have a lot in common. The main thing is cooking. He loves it and I hate it. So he's constantly trying to show me ways I can make some great appetizers and meals for my guests, like he does for his, but without all the hassle. Well, good morning and welcome back to K-Rays, everyone. And today I'm with my good friend Yannick. Hello, everybody. From Quebec, Canada, originally. Quebecois. That's yes. how you say you're a Quebecois? Quebecois. Quebecois. Yeah. And Yannick and I, and I have known each other for two years, but I feel like it's been more like 30 because we immediately <laughs> hit it off and became very good friends. Yeah. One of the reasons why Yannick and I are such good friends um, he also owns a B&B with his husband, Ryan, um, down in Playa Guionis. And we have a lot of the same issues, a lot of the same good times, bad times. So we tend to feed off each other and try to get advice from each other. And uh, But today we're going to find out, Yannick, what brought you to Costa Rica, specifically Playa Guionis. Well, it's a bit of a loaded question because... Um Ryan and I were planning on moving to Costa Rica and retire down here originally. And my sister sort of stole our thunder and moved down to Nosara Playa Guiones with her husband and family uh, around three and a half years ago, more or less. Mm -hmm. And she invited us to come down. She says, you got to come down here. You know, we're going to go and I'll show you around Nosara. You're going to love Guanacaste. It's such a beautiful area. And I was just like, no, I want to be down in Capos, you know, Manuel Antonio area. Uvita, and so we gave in, and we came into Nosara, and we fell in love with the place. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and so our objective was to retire down in Costa Rica and and live the dream that everybody thinks that Costa Rica is the dream and the place to be, which it is. The dream. Absolutely. <laughs> yeah, that dream is just amazing. Yeah. Um, and then you, reality sinks, mm -hmm. like it just sinks in, and it's still beautiful. We still love it down yeah. here. So we um, we got this a uh, beautiful place, and she showed us this house, and we made an offer on it. Just like a lot of people who come down here to Nosara, they just say, you know what? Let me just look at this property. I'm going to buy a house. I'm going to get a quad. I'm going to get a Land Rover. I'm going to send my kids to Del Mar. Well, we don't have any kids, so you can remove that from the equation. <laughs> and so we started the process and made our dreams come true. Now. Did you sell everything at home and come down here? Absolutely. So Ryan was a fire chief. I was in the banking world. We were living crazy lives and the whole stress of North America and go, go, go. Let's get into the rat race. Mm -hmm. And there's just one day I looked at my husband when he was coming home and he had like sort of like this constant little shake going on, you know, uh, this adrenaline and and the the adrenaline of life where you're working 90 hours a week mm -hmm. and it was not working out. Yeah. So I said, either we do something different or you're going to die young. Yeah. And, uh, yeah. yeah, let's just do something different. Yeah. You know, uh, my sister designed the whole house for us. So she did, she was in charge of the renovation. She did the ordering of all the items, furniture, fans to knobs and everything in the house. Like she did a fantastic job. If I had to do it again, I think I'd buy more local products mm -hmm. and try to really search, research the products that are available here in Costa Rica versus buying overseas. Yeah. Um, something stupid like a fan breaking where all your fans are exactly the same fans and one of them breaks mm -hmm. and then you're stuck with... Yeah. 
newly yes. newly down with a friend. Yeah, can you get me a or trying to jimmy yeah. and yeah, exactly. asking your electrician yeah. to say, "Hey, can I? Uh, can yeah. you just bypass that yeah. little car? So it's just one speed, and there's no issues." Yeah. Same, no, same stuff, different <laughs> building. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Yeah. But now, and these are the things that you learn to live with. Yes. That you're like, this is how it is in Costa Rica. This is, yeah. You, you, and you don't get Would stressed about it. Yeah, I mean, you do, not too but often. not the same way as in, <laughs> exactly. up north. Yeah, exactly. Now, question. We've mm -hmm. mentioned your husband, Ryan. Yes. How has it been as far as the LGBTQ mm -hmm. experience moving from, say, Canada to Costa Rica? Oh, it was so easy. Yeah. It, um, when we made it on the offer on the house, we knew that Costa Rica was going to start legalizing um, gay and LGBTQ, same-sex marriages. So oh, let's just name, name it that. Yeah. Um, so we knew that that was going to happen. I think it was May 15th or May 16th or something like that. And so we planned to get married prior to coming down here in May. Mm -hmm. um, we did a, uh, a little ceremony at, at the cottage. And we had our official wedding in October in front of friends and family. So we had all of our paperwork ready that year to sell our house, get married, get officially married in front of our friends and family, quit our jobs, and move down to Costa Rica. Wow. And so, yeah, well, <laughs> it was a all, crazy you are a very organized person, I have to well, say. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you can keep your ducks in a row. You, yes, I'm going to whip them into action. Uh, now, so... <laughs> So you haven't found any real difficulties um, no. being accepted and, and having, you know, any discrimination? I want to see like 95% of the time we get, I tell people, oh, it's my husband and whatnot. People don't have a reaction. Yeah. I think they try to correct me from esposo to esposa, uh -huh. thinking that I made an error, oh, like a, gra yeah. a grammatical <laughs> error. And no, no, it's That's esposo, true. esposo. Yeah. And then they're like, oh. Oh, okay, yeah. wonderful. Okay, let's move on. And it's just yeah. it's a non-issue. Well, that's that's how I felt about it. Yeah. But no, we've been uh, we've had our pride here in uh, Nosar in June of last year, which was a it was amazing. Yeah. It was so beautiful to see a culture just start start to flourish, and it's like living it thirty years ago in the U.S. Mm -hmm. Except. I wasn't there. I wasn't ready for that in my lifetime to be able to experience that. I was too young for that. Mm -hmm. And now actually experiencing it here in Costa Rica is is fantastic. Yeah. It's a wonderful yeah. evolution of things. Well, I will say I was in the States when it happened mm -hmm. and all I saw was the video yeah. um, footage of everything. And mm -hmm. it looked like it had a great crowd. Yeah. And with you leading on the quad. <laughs> <you and I, laughs> I said, that's my Yannick. Um, so I was very happy yeah. for you. And obviously I have a lot of friends. Mm -hmm. I have family. So it's nice to know that this is somewhere that it, it is um, easy, like you said, to, mm -hmm. to integrate. Now, let's talk pros and cons yeah. of, number one, moving to this country. Mm -hmm. Number two, owning a b, &B. Yes. Because um, there's a lot of pros and cons. Mm -hmm. Well, uh, let's start with the pros. Work-life balance uh, for us is definitely a huge pro for us. Um, that ability to do things when you want to mm -hmm. most of the time i'm not strapped to a specific schedule so it's more on the self-employed side where you got that flexibility the weather here is fantastic mm -hmm. um and that's also a pro and a con at well, the same time say. <laughs> except in rainy season yeah uh, i love raining season you know it's it's great like yeah. you and i going yeah. with ryan up into uh, yeah. watching movies up in uh oh, in <laughs> I mean, and I say too, I love rainy mm -hmm. season too, except for the the rainy season that yeah. is the three weeks of nonstop rain. Yes. Where you really kind of can't even leave your house. Mm -hmm. But you do, you know it. It's almost like winter season in New England or in Canada, mm -hmm. where you say it's going to rain, it's going to snow, a yep. foot of snow. We're in the house for a week. Mm -hmm. You learn to just say, I'm going to accept this and read, read more books, watch mm -hmm. movies. Um, okay, so what would be the cons? raining season yeah <laughs> yeah i think it's not even the part that it's raining it's everything that comes with it i love the rain when we're talking about mold oh, oh yeah. yeah that's yeah, just that you gotta stay on mm -hmm. top of it if you gotta we have a white house yeah oh yeah yeah mm -hmm. so our gardener is scrubbing constantly the mold off the walls on a regular basis um the cons Workers showing up at your house whenever they want, not when you're expecting them. So even though you, <laughs> you I forget got, about a lot of this. Yeah, uh, yeah. And you yeah. think when you think it's over, it mm -hmm. isn't. So yeah. our renovations took approximately. Yeah. Well, it started in May mm -hmm. um, while we were in Canada. My sister took care of all the beautiful work, and then we got here in December. 
Well, actually, we got here in October, and our first guest checked in in December, and the house wasn't finished. The yeah. pool wasn't done. Uh, the kitchen wasn't installed. And then all of that was done, and then you're expecting them to just go away, and everything is, is going to be fun. You can live your life, and everything's <laughs> going to be beautiful. But no, you've got another six months of... Little things. Little things, yeah. yeah. Like, ah, yeah. oh, yes, uh, we did this incorrectly or whatnot, mm -hmm. which is just part of the game. And yeah. That's where you got to live the Pura Vida. Oh, like, yeah. Oh. Oh, and, and you need to be on top of it. Like you said, yes. you were lucky you had your sister here. Absolutely. You need to have someone here explaining what you want and mm -hmm. making sure that's how it... Because I would say one of the cons I have is I say this is what I want, and then if I do leave for a day or two and I come back, I'm like, oh, that is not even close to what I wanted. And then yeah. almost sometimes you either have to say, well, I'll live with it, mm -hmm. or I have to do it over. Uh, most of the times I say, I'll live with it, um, instead of doing it over. Well, friends no are like renovating this house that yeah. they got in uh, in Nosara town, and it's a really cute house right across the street from Super Nosara. And oh, yeah. they put in a staircase, which was great, but then the railing is right in the middle of a patio door, and the walls was off by one foot, and just like all these like small yeah. little things that sometimes you just take for granted that mm -hmm. people are going to follow instructions yeah. on how it's going to be done, and yeah. it doesn't get done, and it's fine. Yeah. You yeah, just gotta live again, with it. Pura vida. Pura vida. Now, one of the things that, that makes us, um, you and I, mm -hmm. friends, yeah. is your absolute love of cooking. Yes. And my absolute hatred of cooking. <laughs> <laughs> well, you're good so, at it. That's the well, worst part. Well, I say hatred of cooking, but I have no choice because I own a restaurant. Yes. And how many times I go to your house and mm -hmm. have absolutely wonderful meals, and you say, one of these days I'm coming up and I'm going to show you some simple mm -hmm. menu items. That will be great for everyone and easy for you because of my hatred of cooking. Absolutely. So today we're actually going to do a segment of mm -hmm. you showing me how to make your unbelievable. When I say unbelievable, I mean bruschetta. It's not that difficult. Mm -hmm. But I literally had, I think, 12 pieces the day Christmas Eve when we went to mm -hmm. your house. It was so good. That's how good it was. And I said, I need to put this on my menu. So we're going to actually do that segment where you're going to show right. me how to make it. All right, so I love to use fresh ingredients for making bruschetta for pretty much all of our meals. Like at Castle Vitality, we make everything fresh from jams to salsa to everything. And so we, we got here, we've got some fresh tomato. I like to use these little cherry tomatoes because they have more of like a sweet flavor to them. My favorite. And same thing with red onions. My favorite. I know, sweet flavor. <laughs> Basil's also got a look of bittersweet taste to it, which I really love, and yeah, it's very fresh right now. So let's grab that knife over there, and we're gonna cut up some tomatoes. What I like to do is just cut it off in to slices of four, just like that. Just keep it simple, stupid, right? And let's get to work on these onions. I like to cut them up really thin. I don't want it to be overly powerful. Too much. Now, why red and not white onions? Um, it's just preferred taste. I think that red onions are really great when they're eaten raw versus the yellow ones or the white on onions are a little bit more potent in taste. Good to know. And I like the sweetness of mm -hmm. um, the red onions. Let me add some onions to this. Okay. okay let's cut up with the rest of the tomatoes. Oh, okay. yeah, so it's similar to pico de gallo. Oh. Yeah, pretty much like a pico de gallo, except instead of putting cilantro in it, what we're going to be putting inside is um, basil. Now, here's the fun part. Salt. Oh. I love salt with tomatoes. It is so fantastic. Um, how much salt do I put? I don't know. I'm going to have to taste it. So we're going to go and try it out. Okay. <laughs> and maybe a lot of little pepper. Not too much. And we're going to let it sit. Now, this recipe, the best part is that you can make it in the morning mm -hmm. and start plating it in the afternoon and okay. your tomatoes are just going to have like a really beautiful salty flavor to it. What you're going to want to do though is you need to remove the juice. If you're putting the juices on your bruschetta, forget it. You're now done. did you put more olive oil on it? Not yet. No, okay. Yep, we're going to start putting olive oil on top. Okay. And just a dab will do Yeah, just a little bit. Give it some olive flavor. And the best part is we're going to be adding some oh. fresh basil. That's mm. Ah, smell that. Mm. I love it. We grow a lot of this in the back in my area. Oh, wow. Down below. And every time the wind blows and it smells this way, oh. It's, yeah, it's it. so nice. And if you ever have too much of it, you just pop it in the blender with a little bit of garlic, olive oil, salt, mm. some parmesan, yes. and make your own pesto if you want to. It's so easy. Pesto. 
Okay, so the thing about basil is that you don't want to over chop it. Because if you're over chopping your basil, you're losing all the flavor. And your flavor is pretty much going to be landing on this cutting board. And it's not going to go inside your plate. So you can roll your basil up just a little bit like that, just so that it's a little bit more stable and together. And then you cut it. Oh, we know to roll it up. Well, it just makes it, it, it oh, let's see, I'm, this is all over the map right now, so we're just going to be going. I know, but I, know, I, didn't know, I didn't know that. I'm usually doing one leaf at a time. There you go. <laughs> Are you serious? You really do one leaf at a time? <laughs> Listen, did we already discuss that I hate cooking? Well, I'm sometimes sure it's just the lack of <laughs> techniques. I don't know, maybe. And look how beautiful Listen. that is. Look how fresh that looks nice. Oh, that looks beautiful. Yeah. So what we're doing here is we're slowly roasting some garlic and olive oil. Um, what I, this, you can use this for so many different things and I love using it for bruschetta. Um, I normally do this for about half an hour on low. Garlic, olive oil, you can get, actually get pre-peeled garlic which is so much easier. And you want to get it to the point where it sort of like turns into this golden color, but not too golden. If not, you're going to change the flavor completely. When I'm done cooking this oil, uh, this garlic and this oil, I remove the garlic from the oil. I put it aside, I put it in a mason jar, and that's one of the best things. You just cover it with fresh new oil. If not, your oil is going to taste funky. And you can reutilize this oil for making any other dishes. So now you've got a garlic flavored oil, but you don't want to store it with that. So look at this garlic, look how golden it is. So remember you can put this in a mason jar afterwards yes. and top it up with new oil. Yeah. But what we're going to do is we're going to take some of this garlic yes. and we're sort of going like to mash it. We don't need that much. Do you want these? Oh, you've got a little masher thing. Listen, okay, I guess... I might not like to cook, but I have all the tools. <laughs> I guess you can use some, like, some funky mat, like funky little tools in the kitchen. Yeah, you still don't need too, uh, too much. Yeah. You don't want it to be... Mushy, but look how beautiful it is. Smell that. Oh my god. Oh my mm. god. Where's Count Dracula? Delicious. <laughs> Alright, so our bread's ready and let's let's, let's listen to this. It's like oh. when it's like that, you know it's like perfect. It's just golden. Yep. It's wonderful. Oh. And so we're just gonna put these over here mm -hmm. so that we can start building them. Just watch out, it's hot. Okay. Burning yourself. Another one of my favorite things. Burning yourself? Bread. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I thought it was sarcasm. I just really thought it was sarcasm as, as here. As funny as um, that is, you know the one thing I have never done? Burn myself. Cut myself a million times. No. Myself. Oh, I burned myself of many times. now that I just said that. Yeah, touch the wood. Mm -hmm. Okay, so I'm just gonna go and spread this on yeah. top here. You don't want to be overly generous because not it's just gonna be like a garlic mush, mm -hmm. but you still want to have some some good flavor to mm -hmm. it. You wanna try it out? Sure. Right, careful, it's hot. Um, see, for me, I would be loaded. <laughs> you can. You know what? Make it however you want to make it. This is your dish. This is like K Ray's new signature dish. Yeah, that's right. Okay. With what's the special ingredient? <laughs> patience. That's right. Oh yeah, lots and lots of patience. If you're trying to rush things in the kitchen, nope, it's not happening. Okay. 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 All right. So let's get our tomatoes going. We don't want any juice whatsoever. Like any juice. you. Oh, like, no, no. Just uh, just pour like the juice out of it. There you go. And then pop it on top. That's it. And you might want to push it down just like a little bit because like when you're gonna just stick to yeah, the just so it's thick. Oops. Yeah, not too oh, much. Not too much. Yeah. <laughs> and what do we say about K Ray's cooking? There you go, watch. Yeah, see. Push it down thing. here. Oh that. There okay, you go. Same. So now you're like you got like a little hole, like a little pit for oh, you okay. or a well for you to put in your uh, See now that that makes a lot of sense. Things you, the little things make a difference, you know. Yeah. Oh no juice. Oh, when you saw that, huh? Uh -huh, I caught you. Uh, <laughs> see, that, that's I want where soggy the, bread. Wait, this soggy is where the patience comes in. Yes, take your time. Mm -hmm. Tranquila. <laughs> Tranquila. Which is so easy for me. Yes. So we say a little... Oh, chin chin? Cilantro. Cilantro. <laughs> oh my god. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. 
Oh my God, it's delicious. Oh. I'm sorry for you folks at home. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Six ingredients can make a wonderful appetizer. Oh my God, that's good. Um, there you have it. Carrie's new for chef. Come on up. <laughs> Erase Irish Club and My pub with a pool in Costa Rica. Slanja!